I didn't even think of that part. I didn't either. It's a sensitive mic. As we look at the army painting, we want to begin in the upper left-hand corner with the flag representing the Grand Union. That was the last time that flag was used. We go back to 1775 with two different main events. Uh, April, we had the Battle of Lexington, the shot heard around the world. And then we have the actual beginning of the Continental Army with the birthday of June 15, 14, 1775. In this particular venue or vignette, we see a five-team cannon team. We have Molly Pitcher up there, and she was the first woman ever compensated for military service by the United States government. And even today, when the armored divisions have their annual banquet, they will uh, do the first toast to Molly Pitcher. We also see Valley Forge, we see Paul Revere, we see uh, Washington crossing the Delaware. So again, a very important part of our, the beginning of our history. And it, with this painting, we really serpentine through history itself. Hence, we have this parade of uniforms and I like to really have people see uh, you know, as we go stage by stage. The next thing we would have would be the um, War of 1812. We see that standing figure. In the distance behind him is Fort Snelling, which is our connection Minnesota-wise to this, which dates back to 1820. Next to him, we have someone from the Spanish-American War in the 1830s, uh, 1840s. We then move on to the Civil War, where we see several figures. We have a woman spy. Women played a, a rather important role in the Civil War as spies, believe it or not, in addition to being nurses. And then from there we see a man in the traditional blues, the Union blues, but behind him we have a gentleman in a red shirt with black pants. That is the Minnesota militia. So when the Minnesota militia first went down to participate in the Civil War, the non-commissioned officers all were wearing those type of uniforms. From there we then move on to the Spanish-American War and it was sort of the beginning of calling out. And so that's why you have the gentleman holding his hand up because it really was the first time that America was beginning to make its presence known on the world stage. As we then move down to the center, just be to the center of the painting, you'll notice a World War I doughboy standing over a cross and on that cross is the date November 11th, 1918, as we all know today as Veterans Day. Originally it was Armistice Day. Just to, behind him is a World War II figure, someone landing at Normandy, and the person who actually modeled for that did actually land at Normandy. His name was Robert Rupp. Just to his left, you will notice a skull and two boots. That is, uh, commemorates the uh, death march at Bataan because we had quite a few individuals from the Brainerd Lakes area, part of the 194th Armored Division, who were part of that. Uh, just to the lower right, you'll notice a small patch with a shield and a star and a sword. That was the Persian Gulf Command that I'm honoring my father. You also notice the soldier standing on the Italian boot, and we have the Red Bull Brigade, the uh, uh, 34th Infantry Division. From there, we sort of move over to a gentleman with a fur collar that go, takes us to the Korean War. We then come down to the front to the war in Vietnam. We also then see a contemporary soldier who has three different uniforms. And like I said, a lot of what we're doing here walks us through history. So he has the Woodlawn uniform flak vest on. He has the uh, first Gulf War helmet uh, cover. And then his other uniform is second Gulf War. And behind him is a woman with the digital, which is now a defunct uh, uniform and then she is like paying homage over a fallen soldier below that you see the purple heart silver star and bronze star we move away then to the very far left on the bottom side of the painting and you see a gentleman pointing to someone in a revolutionary war costume figure that is gordon girling who is the brainchild behind this project and we'll talk more about him later the other person is thomas Paine, and his uh, essay on common sense was like the most uh, published, published and read uh, article from in the 1776 next to the Bible, believe it or not. Then we have a uh, uh, homeless veteran sitting on a gutter. And of course his back is turned uh, in, in a way, are we turning our back on him or is he turning his back on us? We have so many people that we need to take care of and because of the trauma they've gone through, we see unfortunate drug use, alcoholism, for the blood they spilled. So this is really the painting in a nutshell. And there are a lot of varied symbolic elements that I hope you will visit some of the essays to look more as to what was said about this. But um, there we have the army. Right well, I mean, that was that perfect. You know what? And I thought that one, to me, and I could be wrong, 
what was going to be a little bit of a tougher one to do because of the fact that there are, you, you have a longer period of history yeah. to some extent, so there's a little more items, but I think that timing was about four and a half minutes. Okay. So. Well, I don't know yeah. if you're going to be able to cut out of that because it's, you know, no, no, I, I, I liked it all. It's as long as I can stay on task with what you're pointing at, I, you'd say, and I'm looking, I couldn't follow. Well, yeah, I, well, I, I kind of moved you I across, know, you know. Well, I was following exactly. It's yeah. just engrossing. Well, I was down here, first of all, then I tried to catch up. But if you have the images, yeah. and we're moving across. What I, what I love is, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't, he has the dates, he has the context.